Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Berry ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. This is ABC News Nightline, reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Good evening. The focus of our broadcast tonight was and remains the situation in Poland. But late this evening, one of the world's great entertainers and musicians, John Lennon of the Beatles, was shot outside his New York home. Ted Koppel is a name that resonates with anyone who values in-depth journalism. As the former anchor of Nightline and a distinguished journalist, Ted is a true legend in the field of broadcasting. He spent decades covering the most significant events of our time, from political upheavals to global crises. He offers insights on the state of journalism and the challenges facing media. At the time I interviewed Ted, he had just retired from his everyday job and, for now, worked mainly from home as Mr. Mom. And he discusses that challenge. Morning on the air with Ted Koppel. Uh, Ted was uh, an ABC correspondent, covered the Vietnam War, uh, bureau chief in Hong Kong, diplomatic correspondent traveling with Henry Kissinger, spent most of his life on the road, never saw too much of his family. Now he sees his family all the time because he has turned into a, uh, we don't want to call you a housewife, Ted. What would you call yourself now? Oh, I'd call myself a fellow who spends a little more time at home than I did before. <laughs> okay. Did you get the, the wife and kids off uh, this morning? Uh, one kid home uh, because they're, uh, they've got a day off from school and uh, my wife will be leaving shortly. Okay, and your wife is uh, going to school, right? To uh, uh, law school. Uh, right. To law school, and uh, you have taken over the uh, the housework. Which, what does this involve for you? Is it kind of an all day thing, or uh, do you have time for yourself too? Well, it's uh, it's essentially a part time thing. First of all, I'm still working for ABC. I do a radio commentary every day, and I do a television newscast on Saturdays. Uh, then I'm also working on a novel, and my wife still does uh, a great deal of the work around the house, but. Uh, decided since we have four children that one of us really needs to be home during the day and uh, so at least for this first academic year I'm, uh, I'm the choice. Have you developed a kind of an empathy for, for women uh, who uh, are locked in with that housework every day? Well there's no question about that. I, I don't think you can uh, you can help but uh, develop a certain amount of empathy in that regard because uh, even though I've got an awful lot of other outlets I'm also working on a novel. The fact is that uh, that you are locked in, and you're locked in by unpredictable things. You're locked in by the you know the doctor's visit, the carpool, the, the shopping that needs to be done. Uh, and uh, I suspect that for most women, I'm sure that there are many who uh, who enjoy the job thoroughly. But for most women, especially those who've gone uh, on to college or possibly even graduate school, uh, the the whole business of, of having to stay home, of being forced to do that, of not really having the option of, of leaving. Uh, can be extremely constricting. I would imagine uh, this is kind of a stupid question, maybe, because uh, uh, Vietnam, of course, is, wasn't the greatest place to be, I'm sure. Would you would you rather be where you are right now than, than over in Vietnam covering uh, uh, the war? No, I don't think that's, a, that's a, a, a stupid question at all, because in many ways, uh, I think Vietnam uh, gave a lot of us who were over there, at least in the capacity of, of journalists, uh, you know, who weren't constantly on the front line. I mean, we had a great deal of flexibility over there. We'd go out and we'd be on the front line uh, with the troops for perhaps a day or uh, in, in the early periods of Vietnam uh, when I was there in 66 and 67, uh, there'd be times when you'd be out in the, in the front line for two or three or possibly even four days at a time, but it gave you a remarkable sense of freedom uh, in the sense that your only concern was A, staying alive, B, finding enough water, uh, C, the notion that uh, Within the next few hours, be it 24 or 48, uh, you'd be back in Saigon or Da Nang again and uh, be able to take a, a shower and sleep on a, on a clean bed again. Uh, during those periods, you tended to, to set aside in your mind all the little problems uh, that build up when you're, when you're not in danger or when you are not in, in that kind of a setting. Did you always want to be a broadcaster, Tim? I, I grew up in England uh, and uh, was born uh, just as the 
First World, I mean, as First World War, I'm making myself a lot older now, uh, as the Second World War began, and even though I was very young during and shortly after the war, uh, I remember my parents listening avidly to uh, Edward R. Morrow and to Alistair Cook, uh, who used to do a, a program called Letter from America, uh, and from the earliest time I can remember when I started thinking about what I wanted to do with my life, I think uh, broadcast journalism was it. Now, for those uh, wanting to get into broadcast journalism, I guess you can tell them it was not too easy, right? Well, uh, I don't think it's really easy for anyone because it's one of those jobs that has a lot of things going for it. Uh, first of all, in, in many instances, as you know, it, it, uh, it pays extremely well. I remember uh, the late Alan Sherman once, uh, once wrote an article in a magazine in which he said that uh, broadcasting tends to make prisoners of uh, all the people who work in it because they pay us more than we're worth. Uh, it does pay well. It's an exciting field. It gives you the opportunity for doing a great deal of traveling, uh, meeting an awful lot of fascinating people. So, uh, yes, it's it's one of those fields where there are an awful lot more applicants than there are jobs available. Mm -hmm. So it is difficult to get into the uh, the broadcasting area. Uh, and I don't think that there's, there's really any hard and fast way to, to recommend. There is no single path that, uh, that guarantees an entree to the broadcasting field. Since you uh, mentioned money, what do you think about the Barbara Walters deal? Well, I think the lady is, uh, is earning an extraordinary amount of money, but that's saying the obvious. Uh, clearly, she wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't have received that much money unless she was worth it. Okay. You're, you're still doing the, uh, the anchor spot on Saturday nights? Yes. Okay. Do you, does that uh, require a lot of preparation? Do you have to go in early? Or? Well, I usually leave Washington about, uh, I leave my home around uh, 8.15 on Saturday mornings and fly out to New York on the 9 o'clock shuttle and uh, spend the day out there and then come back again on the 9 o'clock shuttle in the evening. But it requires a lot more preparation than that because on Saturdays uh, there is a tendency for the news to be kind of slow. So we have to start thinking, usually as soon as one program is over, we start planning uh, at least what hard feature stories we're going to have for the following week. Uh, or if we're doing any investigative reports, we get those underway sometimes uh, more than a week in advance. And then uh, when we get up there on Saturday, if there is a lot of news, then the feature stories get put on the back burner and can be used some other time. Uh, and if there isn't a lot of news, then we decide which of the feature stories we're going to use on that particular week. And we screen them and re-edit them and, uh, uh, and put the show together during the course of the day. Has this been kind of a traumatic experience for uh, your wife, Grace Ann, and, and yourself, Ted, uh, for, for you to, uh, you know, do the vacuuming and cleaning up the breakfast dishes and getting everybody off uh, to, to school? And, uh, and then your wife, of course, is not having to do all those things. Has it been kind of a, a big... A big change? I don't know what you'd call it exactly. Uh, yeah, have your lives changed a lot? Well, it is a, you know, it's a difficult question to answer because obviously there have been changes. Uh, I mean, for much of the past 13 years, there's been so much traveling. We moved uh, 11 times in eight years. And, uh, you know, saying that makes it, uh, makes it seem a lot simpler than it really was. I mean, any time that you make a move in which you're, you're packing up a household and you're packing up uh, initially it was two children later on it was four children uh, there's just an enormous amount that goes into that that really can't be adequately described in, in the context of this kind of a conversation mm -hmm. uh, you know it means quite literally closing down a house or an apartment it means moving uh, if not everything that you own uh, then at least most of what you own and if you're not moving it or taking it with you uh, then at least it means packing it up. And when you do that 11 times in eight years, and when one half of the team uh, has the very, at least it always seemed like a legitimate excuse to me in the past. I'm not sure if I think it was so legitimate if the roles were totally reversed now. You know, when, when one half of that team uh, says, you know, I'm sorry, honey, I, I really can't help you with that because I've got to go off and cover such and such a story, then it becomes enormously difficult. So uh, in that sense, the, uh, the role reversal has been, uh, has been an eye-opener for me because I now realize all the things that are involved in, in keeping a household going. It's a, it's a tremendously complex task, uh, and it's, it's one that I think we, uh, we tend to dismiss uh, rather easily. I say we, uh, you know, the men who've been out of the house all these mm -hmm. years, uh, it's, it's
it's very easy just to take for granted the fact that the house is always kept neat and clean, the fact that there's always a, a good hot meal on the on the table, uh, the fact that the doctor's appointments are always met, the fact that the uh, the orthodontist appointment is not forgotten, the fact that the carpool operates smoothly, uh, the fact that the house is simply a running, functioning uh, organization. You don't expect to do this uh, forever, though, right? I sincerely hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ted. Sense. Have you seen the movie Network? That's what he wanted. Yes, I have. Okay. What did you think? I thought it was a fascinating piece of satire. Uh, I mean, I think I think what you've got to do is uh, is what Patty Shayevsky, who who wrote the uh, the screenplay of the movie, himself pointed out. You you've got to regard it as satire, and satire means that you take uh, a certain number of, of of things that are uh, legitimate. I mean, legitimate in the sense that they do happen, and you exaggerate them. Uh, and I think as long as people look at that movie as being an exaggeration, as being something of a caricature of the way that networks run, uh, then you're going to get some insights into the network. They are not, uh, believe me, as, uh, as one-dimensional as that movie suggests. Uh, and uh, you've got to keep saying to yourself, exaggeration, exaggeration, exaggeration. But I think we're a little bit sensitive in the broadcasting field to criticism of any kind, uh, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be subjected to it. Right. Well, I tell you, ABC sure did the right thing with that uh, Roots uh, program. Wow. It was an extraordinary program, wasn't, wasn't it? Wasn't that something? Jeez. I was just reading in the paper this morning that uh, I forget now whether uh, whether it now occupies uh, uh, five or six of the, uh, of the top ten slots for all-time viewing uh, or all-time highs in, in uh, in viewer attention, but it was an absolutely extraordinary series. Well, it picked up the all-time uh, one uh, one night programming, seventy-one percent, which beat Gone with the Wind. That's right. That's right. Story. Well, I think it was the uh, it was the right show at the right time, and uh, I'm very very proud of ABC that uh, that they put it on. Right. Quite a network. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ted. Okay. Take care. All right. Bob Berry, WOKY, ninety ninety two. Thank you for listening to Bob Berry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Berry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.